Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's fur video. We're going to have a look at the next 10 to 14 days for today's fur video. So day 10 is going to take us around 25th of uh, April. We'll be out staying out beyond that instead of GFS and ECM ensembles. We're going to try a couple of weeks. going to have a look at CFS V2 at the end of video the next four weeks, which will take us well into May, of course. I shall get on that for you very shortly to say that the first video released today. Uh, was our nice uh, 7 a.m. upload. Uh, just a couple of minute forecast. We're going to weather in detail over the next couple of days. And also European Outlook has been released as well. So check out all of today's videos if you would like to do that. Please like, share and subscribe. Let us know in the comments what you think about this and all of our videos. Thank you so much everybody uh, for doing that. Right, we're going to start our censoring temperature then. So uh, we're still looking pretty cold as we come to the middle of April. So uh, provisional up to yesterday, 14th, we're standing at 5.7. So an anomaly of uh, 1.2 1 .1 degrees uh, below average. It's probably going to drop a little bit more over the next day or so. Uh, going to have some more cold nights. But from the weekend onwards, I think we will arrest uh, the decline. And we may actually start lifting this up uh, next week. Probably quite a gradual process. We're not talking about anything particularly warm coming up uh, next week, I don't think. But a return to average temperatures, um, you know, uh, should see a bit of a recovery. So I think this will start to tick up. Whether, you know, where it finishes up remains to be seen. Whether we ever get back to uh, what we had in March, which was 7.2, that remains uh, to be seen. But I think for the time being, it's probably about as low as it's going to get. It might go down to around 5.6 or 5.5 uh, by the weekend taking into account uh, some more quite cold and frosty nights. But then from the weekend onwards, that should be as low uh, as it gets, really. Uh, these are GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're going to brighten today. So the red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average will brighten. We're starting off cold and average, of course, at the moment. And uh, it's going to stay below average through into the weekend as well with a slow sort of uh, recovery taking place by the early part of next week. We are back up to uh, around average by around the 20th of uh, April. After that, we look rather flat, it has to be said. Quite a bit of scatter. So we've got colder ensemble members uh, down here. We've got warmer ensemble members up here, of course, uh, which keeps the ensemble in around average. We may go into a warmer spell of weather as we get into the last week of April, but not quite as uh, assured, uh, I don't think, on that. Uh, today as it was yesterday. Nevertheless, we are going to see a warming trend. So at the very least, it should start to feel more spring-like as we go into next week, I think. Precipitation-wise, going to be a lot of dry weather over the next few days. Not totally dry, not completely dry, but generally on the dry and happy side. Uh, really from beginning to end, even in towards the end of April, it looks relatively dry here, considering this is extended range within the GFS and its ensembles. Temperature anomaly is from the 15th, 23rd of April. It's going to be colder than average, not just the UK, but through most parts of North West Europe. We seem to have said that a lot lately over the past uh, few uh, weeks of updates. Precipitation anomaly is large on the dry and average side from the 15th, 23rd of April, especially so for England and Wales. Latest wind flow map from Earth School dark net shows that high pressure continues to be in control of the weather. Its centre is shifting more to our east north east which is beginning to allow slightly more of a southerly southeasterly to begin to get going. That's particularly out to our west in the Atlantic, actually. But over time, we will start to see these slightly milder winds beginning to move into uh, the UK. So that's where the gradual recovery in temperature is coming from as we're cutting off sort of the Arctic winds that we have been experiencing over the past few uh, days and weeks. Really since Easter, isn't it, that the northerly set in. Uh, right, you say UK Met is looking for sunny. High pressure ridging through the country on sunny. Sending over Scandinavia, but sending ridge down into the UK. Should be probably the dry weather, but there will be a weather system bringing outbreaks of rain to the far northwest into uh, Monday. So through sunny into Monday, we probably bring a trough through the country, but may start to uh, generate showers, possibly some longer spells of rain by sort of Monday to Tuesday. We are actually under a trough. So early next week does turn more unsettled. There will be some rain, which we need for the gardens. It's been pretty dry, especially so down in uh, the south, so we could do with a drop of rain. Uh, by Wednesday, though, the high pressure is beginning to ridge back in again from off the Atlantic. That probably takes over 
into the second half of next week. That's as far as we get with UK Met. Let's have a look at the uh, GFS 6 then. So again, high pressure is in control of the weather as we go into the weekend. But early next week, we do push this trough through. Monday and Tuesday will bring, uh, at the very least, some showers. Probably some longer spells of rain to the north and the northwest. Some of those showers could be quite heavy. Uh, you know, uh, so, so there may be some downpours around through the early part of next week, which would be useful for gardens in the south. By Wednesday, the high pressure is beginning to re-establish out to west, but by Thursday, the high pressure is back in over the top of the country once again. And then we start to move up towards day 10, dominated by high pressure over the country. That'll bring a lot of dry and fine weather in the second half of next week. But as we get to day 10, we might push another trough through, which might bring another showery burst uh, sometime around day 10. And then back into the ridge again for day 10 itself. Quite a nice ridge extending from the Atlantic up towards Scandinavia, although there could be a chilly easterly wind. Now, in the more extended range with this GFS 6 z run, does start to turn things more unsettled. As we come to the end of April, look at this, it's got a deep area of low pressure starting to move in from off the Atlantic, so that would definitely begin to stir things up. And look how this GFS uh, 6 z run finishes up. This is Saturday the 1st of May, so we're into uh, the the uh, week, the, 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 bank, the bank holiday weekend. Uh, you know, we're into the May Day bank holiday weekend or whatever they call it now. Is it early spring Bank holiday weekend. I'm not sure I call it now, but anyway, we're into a bank holiday weekend, and uh, and look at this. We've got blocking returning again. Uh, vast uh, sort of areas of high pressure over Greenland, back into the Arctic, sending the jet stream and the areas of low pressure south. So this is very cool and unsettled as we go into the bank holiday weekend. It's deep areas of low pressure over top of country, and uh, masses and masses and masses of non block. Now, bear in mind it's over two weeks away, so of course it's very unreliable. But we've had so much northern blocking over the past few weeks and months and it would not be out of the realms of um you know impossibility but we might get blocking returning again so just have to wait and see uh, what happens uh, with that. But definitely the GFS 6 that is going to town on normal blocking and send a jet stream that trough of low pressure southwards as we go into the, uh, into the May day back holiday weekend. Uh, so I have to wait and see. By the way, May uh, back holiday weekend updates will begin uh, over the weekend, actually. I think Saturday. Uh, could be the first one, so watch out for those. Let's have a G. Yeah, we're talking again. High pressure reaching in from uh, from Scandinavia into western parts of Europe um, through weekend into the open next week. We just weaken the high pressure off, pushes trough through. That could bring some sherry bursts early next week. Then back into high pressure again as we get into the middle of uh, next week. So higher pressure begins to uh, reform uh, into the uh, middle of next week, setting us down. It could be a bit chilly again under that area of high pressure, certainly not a heat wave, but it's settled things down and it will be pleasant enough probably in the uh, April sunshine. It's quite cold across Scandinavia though, it has to be said. But high pressure sticks around as we move up towards day 10 uh, with the GM uh, as well. Uh, by day 10 itself, which is 25th of April, we're possibly beginning to start going a bit more unsettled once more. And then the ECM looks like that again, the Scandinavian high send ridge down into Ireland and the UK uh, over the weekend. Early next week turns rather showery with this trough pushing through from uh, the west and the high pressure comes back through the middle second half of next week uh, so we return to dry conditions and this begins to pull up some warmer air from the south as well so this will probably get the temperature into the mid to maybe upper teen celsius by the end of uh, next week looks quite nice doesn't it with the high pressure to our northeast drawing up a southerly southeasterly wind uh, that's probably the warmest of the uh, model runs today uh, to day 10 and as i say that does look potentially like it could get the temperature into the upper teens celsius uh this is the precipitation type forecast based on that ecm run from tometio.com so we've got showers in the southeast today well two of those could be quite heavy they will die out quickly overnight so like, and then many places will be dry uh, as we go into the end of week and into weekend, showery bursts in the northwest, but making very little progress into the country until we get into the uh, early part of next week and then a few showers breaking out, but not that many actually from that trough. Then the high pressure comes back, of course, through the middle and second half next week. We go mainly dry, start to pull up those warmer southerly winds. That might see some heavy rain, maybe some thunder uh, across Ireland and into the far southwest of England as we move up towards day 10. But overall, it looks pretty dry with the wind drawing up from a south southeast direction. I reckon that probably turns quite warm. 
Uh, let's have a look at the two meter temperature and see uh, how that looks actually as uh, we get to there. So this is a little bit off on a tangent. So I'll just very quickly try and uh, rattle through uh, with this. So uh, I'm not sure if it's going to work or not, actually. So I should have got these loaded up. There we go, we're at day 10. So let's just go back. So uh, this will be at uh, 6 o'clock in the evening on the uh, 24th of April. So you see we've got these nice sort of yellow, orangey colours in the South South West. It's a little bit cooler for Eastern areas, I have to say. But in the South South West, I reckon that's getting the temperature into the upper teen Celsius on the temperature scale. In most darker, in most darker yellow to almost orange colours, that's like uh, 16, 18, possibly up to near 20 degrees. So yeah, I reckon uh, the uh, ECM does turn things quite warm around days 8, 9, 10. And these are the options on the table within the ECM Ensemble today for day 10, which will go to the 25th of April. 23 members of the ECM Ensembles will have high pressure sitting just to the Northern Country and will be drawing up like an east south So you mainly dry and probably quite warm. 17, uh, including the control and the operation run, again having high pressure uh, just to our north, bringing up the wind from like an east south east direction. Uh, again, so uh, that's going to be mainly dry. That's already established. There should be some warmth involved with that, particularly for southern areas. I mean, 11 just here again, high pressure atomic coach. So all options at day 10 are involving high pressure. The uh, model is differing on the placement of that high pressure some degree but uh, but yeah it's not too bad at all high pressure bring us a spell of spring warm perhaps round days eight nine and ten in two weeks time uh this is the option that we've got it's not quite as good this, this is for the 30th of april it's kind of in line i think with what the gfs 6 z is doing in that we're getting hints yet again as so often over the past few months of retrogression and taking the high pressure back to Greenland. How often have we seen high pressure building from sort of Europe and, and finding its way to Greenland? Absolutely incredible how consistent the Greenland blogging has been over the past few months. So in two weeks time, the high pressure back to Greenland as we're moving in towards the bank holiday weekend, uh, we're beginning to pull in the winds probably from a cooler uh, northerly, northeasterly direction and watch out for low pressure to the, back, to the south of that block. And of course that is increasingly so as we go into the summer, there's more energy available. So when we, if we start, or if we keep getting Greenland blocking into the summer months, then watch out the troughs of low pressure to develop underneath it, triggered by the, by the available energy due to the time of the year. Not necessarily saying we will see Greenland and Northern blocking continuing into the summer months, but obviously, given how much Greenland and Northern blocking we've had over the past few months, it is a possibility. Uh, finally, the CFSV2 means a 500 millibar height is broken down into week periods. The first week period takes from the 15th to the 21st of April. The coming week is dominated by high pressure. So we're high and dry in the week ahead. And we go through to week two, and we're high and dry again. This is the 22nd, 28th of April. The high pressure is over and just to the east of the country. This will be drawing up quite warm winds from a southerly, southeasterly direction as well. So we may get some warmth coming along here at some point uh, between days 5 and 10. Week 3 is going to be the 29th of April to the 5th of May. High pressure over Scandinavia. That's just drawing in uh, probably quite a warmish sort of easterly wind actually. And then we get through to week 4 and a bit of a change is the 6th through to the 12th of April. Hints of the high pressure trying to get back towards Greenland. It's certainly around Newfoundland. Higher pressure down towards Spain. Uh, high pressure blocking around Svalbard. And uh, we could have a trough of low pressure coming into the north and northwest Europe, and possibly with a bit of a dip in the jet stream as well. It doesn't really show a trough, but given given where the ridges are, the ridge there, uh, a bit of a ridge there, and a, and a blocking area of high pressure there, obviously there's going to be some low pressure somewhere, and uh, I reckon there's a chance that the low pressure and the jet stream could be dipping through uh, there, which obviously is going to be quite a cool and unsettled pattern if it comes up, but it's four weeks away, so it's not really worth being concerned about. Right, if you enjoyed the video, then please do smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe to our channel to see future weather content. If you do that, uh, tell your friends, family, everybody else to subscribe to uh, Gaz Weathers. Thank you so much for that. Drop a comment and all of that good stuff. Thank you so much to each and every one of you for all of your support. Right, that's it for today's videos, I think. And uh, tomorrow, we're going to have Jemmy Fry. We'll have a 10 to 14 day for you as well. So uh, keep checking back for all of the updates. Uh, but for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.